Thank you for that beautiful prayer. Our dear missionaries across the world, I bring you the love of President Thomas S. Monson, the First Presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve. As we kneel together in the upper room of the temple or alone in our homes, we pray for you. We know you pray for us as well, and we thank you for your prayers. We count you as our friends, our fellow disciples, our companions, as we build the kingdom of God in preparation for the Savior's return to the earth. We have not held a devotional like this with all the missionaries around the world in more than a decade. We have felt the Lord's Spirit directing us in how to help you in your righteous efforts to invite all to come unto Christ. We have titled our devotional today, Teach Repentance and Baptize Converts. I promise you, as you prayerfully open your minds and hearts during the next two hours, you will receive the spiritual direction you have desired and your mission will be blessed. We in the Quorum of the Twelve share a sacred charge with you. The most important thing we do and the most important thing you do is testify of the Savior and invite all to come unto Him. No one testified of the Savior with greater power than Elder Richard G. Scott, a fellow member of the Twelve who passed away last September. Once, while I was with him in the city of Vitoria, Brazil, he told me of an important lesson he learned in a previous visit to that beautiful city. After an evening devotional, while shaking hands with the saints, an elderly sister handed him a note that he read later that night. The note said, Dear Elder Scott, I very much enjoyed your talk tonight, but I traveled many hours to learn more about the Savior and to hear your witness of Him. Elder Scott realized that he had not spoken of, he had spoken of many important subjects, but that he had neglected his powerful witness of the Savior. He told me, that day I committed to the Lord to always have His name on my lips and to be prepared to testify of Him at all times and in all places. As a missionary, always keep His name on your lips and be prepared as the prompting comes to testify of Him. I know you talk to everyone who will listen to you. Wherever you are, in a bus, on the street, in a teaching situation or in a home of a member, if you are ever unsure of what to say, speak of the Savior, testify of Him, Speak of His doctrine, of faith in Him, of His atonement, repentance, baptism, the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. This is your purpose. This is your charge. This is what we do, you as missionaries and we as the Quorum of the Twelve. Because of the Restoration, you and I know more about the Savior than anyone else. Our greatest responsibility is to extol and defend the divine mission and doctrine of our Lord and Master, Jesus Christ. No matter how much we speak of Him, it is never too much. No matter how much we love Him, our adoration is just beginning. We remember Him and He remembers us. Here is one of my very favorite promises from the Savior. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. Amazing. I give you my witness that the Savior lives and that he knows you and loves you. We testify of Christ as we teach the doctrine of Christ. That doctrine is summarized in words that you all know very, very well. Our purpose is to invite others to come unto Christ by helping them receive the restored gospel through faith in Jesus Christ and His atonement, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, 
and enduring to the end. This doctrine is explained in simplicity in 2 Nephi 31, 3 Nephi 11, 3 Nephi 27, and throughout the scriptures. It's not complicated, and we must not make it complicated. In presenting the doctrine of Christ, Nephi says that he will speak plainly or simply because he says, after this manner doth the Lord God work among the children of men, giving light unto their understanding. We are commanded to keep our teaching simple. I realize I speak to missionaries in very different situations. Some are in countries and cultures that hardly know the name of Jesus Christ, while some of you are in cultures and countries where the name of Jesus Christ is honored and respected. As a missionary and as a general authority, I've lived eight years of my life in Europe, four years of my life in South America, and many years in the United States. We travel extensively. Next month, my wife Kathy and I will see some of you in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Zambia, and Mozambique, three wonderful countries of Africa. Because people throughout the world differ in their readiness, their sophistication, and their receptivity, we carefully craft and adapt our message to the, of the doctrine of Christ to their specific needs. Some you teach will be like those on Mars Hill, where the Apostle Paul said that he found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. He then introduced the doctrine of Christ by saying, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. He started at the beginning, teaching them about faith in the true God, that we are the offspring of God and that Jesus Christ was sent by his father. Alma once had a group of very poor people approach him and ask, we have no place to worship our God. And behold, what shall we do? Alma began teaching the doctrine of Christ by telling them they were blessed because they were humble. And if they would repent, they would find mercy and eventually be saved. After an amazing spiritual manifestation on the day of Pentecost, following the resurrection of Christ, the people were pricked in their hearts or they felt a powerful spiritual impression and asked Peter and the other apostles, what shall we do? Recognizing their faith, Peter taught them the doctrine of Christ in its purest form. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> Just like Paul, Alma, and Peter, you find people with varying degrees of faith and spiritual understanding. As you assess their faith and their needs, teach and testify of the doctrine of Christ, the doctrine clearly stated in your missionary purpose. The Savior prayed, this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. We help the sons and daughters of God, our brothers and sisters, to come to know God the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ, and to feel their love more completely. Your first responsibility is to help lift the faith of a man, woman, or child from wherever they are to a greater faith in Jesus Christ and his atonement. I love the statement in Preach My Gospel, as your understanding of the atonement of Jesus Christ grows, your desire to share the gospel will increase. Ask yourself, what do I really believe about the Savior's atonement? Am I personally experiencing every day the atonement? By increasing your own understanding of the atonement, your effectiveness as a missionary will increase. Do you see why this is so important? 
One of the best ways to invite others to come unto Christ and have faith in Him and in His atonement is to introduce them gently but powerfully to the scriptural teachings of the Book of Mormon. The Book of Mormon begins with Nephi's vision of the Savior. From Nephi to Moroni, the beautiful explanations and illustrations of the power of the Savior's atonement continue. The words of Lehi, Jacob, and Enos, the great teachings of King Benjamin, the testimony of Abinadi, and the miraculous conversions that follow those who experience the atonement, the teachings of Alma on forgiveness, and Amulek on accountability, of Nephi and the son of Nephi as the Savior is born and later visits the saints in the new world, and the teachings of Mormon and Moroni on the miracles and saving grace of Jesus Christ. Learn to love this powerful spiritual nourishment from the Book of Mormon so that you can share it upon the silver platter of your own faith. As you do, I promise you that you will see the faith of those you teach grow. They will receive as an additional spiritual gift the confirming witness that his gospel is restored upon the earth, for they will know that the Book of Mormon is true. I now turn to the important principle of repentance. Preach My Gospel states, you are called to represent Jesus Christ in helping people become clean from their sins, to come to the Savior, a son or daughter of God, must have faith in Him unto repentance. Now a caution to you. In inviting others to come unto Christ, be careful not to move too quickly from your powerful witness of faith to the challenge of baptism without sufficient emphasis on the teaching each investigator about the critically important principle of repentance. We teach repentance and we baptize converts. The Savior said that many would repent through your words. Our words can help those we teach truly desire to change and repent. Repentance means to change, to return to God, to think more of Him trust Him and obey His commandments. Of course, it involves the word of wisdom, going to church and reading the scriptures. But repentance means a change of attitude, a beginning of a mighty change of heart. One of the very significant challenges of our day is that many people you teach do not understand why it is necessary to repent and do not know how to repent. You must guide them. Repentance is critical to true conversion. Do you see why? Faith in Jesus Christ brings a desire to turn away from sin. As a man or woman begins to change, the burden of sin is lightened. As they continue, the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ will eventually eliminate all the guilt and pain and replace these feelings with peace and confidence. This is not some psychological discovery, but the heavenly power of our Savior who suffered in Gethsemane and shed His blood that we might be made clean from our sins. Elders and sisters, your testimony, your teaching, becomes a conduit through which a person begins to act, as Nephi says, without hypocrisy and without deception before God. Through your words, a person begins the real intent necessary for one seeking to come unto Christ. I remember 25 years ago, as Elder Oaks, already a member of the Quorum of the Twelve, visited the mission where I presided. The photo you see is of that day, as he spoke at a pulpit in Bordeaux, France, speaking to the missionaries. Looks just the same, doesn't he? <laughs> One of the subjects he talked about was the meaning of the term real intent. Nephi speaks of real intent, as does Moroni. 
Elder Oaks explained to our missionaries that real intent meant that the person praying was saying to the Lord something like this. I do not ask out of curiosity, but with total sincerity to act on the answer to my prayer. If thou wilt give me this answer, I will act to change my life. I will respond. I will join the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and I will become a disciple of thy son. Unless we help those we teach to get on their knees and learn how to pray personally with real intent, even when we are not with them, they may never feel the need to change or the effect of this repentance. Kneel down with those you teach. We teach repentance and we baptize converts. Next in our purpose is baptism. Do not ever be afraid to teach baptism as you speak of faith and repentance. Of course, there are some areas of the world where baptisms are more frequent than in other areas of the world. But don't be afraid to challenge yourself and engage your investigators to baptism, no matter where you serve. Talk about baptism. Set goals that point to baptism. Be open with your mission president and your mission leaders about who you are teaching and their preparations for baptism. If you are not having success, ask for help from others who are baptizing. If you have few who are progressing, don't feel sorry for yourself. Find others to teach. <coughs> <coughs> Nephi makes it clear that when one has faith in Christ and repents, the next step is baptism. Ordinances are essential to salvation and bring us closer to God. My beloved elders and sisters, I share one final truth. The doctrine of Christ can only be received through revelation. Nephi warns, if, we can, if ye cannot understand what I have said, it will be because ye ask not, neither do ye knock. Wherefore, ye are not brought into the light, but must perish in the dark. But then he adds, if ye will enter in by the way and receive the Holy Ghost, it will show unto you all things what ye should do. I finish with two verses that beautifully connect your missionary purpose and the doctrine of Christ. The first fruits of repentance is baptism. And baptism cometh by faith unto fulfilling the commandments. And the fulfilling the commandments bringeth remission of sins. And the remission of sins bringeth meekness and lowliness of heart and because of meekness and lowliness of heart cometh the visitation of the Holy Ghost, which comforter filleth with hope and perfect love, which love endureth by diligence unto prayer until the end shall come when all the saints shall dwell with God. There it is, our purpose and the doctrine of Christ in two verses. We teach repentance and baptize converts. We invite others to come unto Christ by helping them receive the restored gospel through faith in Jesus Christ and his atonement, repentance, baptism, receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost, and enduring to the end. I humbly share with you my sure witness that Jesus is the Christ. He is resurrected. He appeared with his father to the prophet Joseph Smith. He directs his kingdom upon the earth today through his prophet Thomas S. Monson. Speak of him. Speak of his doctrine. He will speak of you to the Father. And if we continue faithful one day, we will all be wrapped in his arms with those we love, and we will be his forever. We love you, but more importantly, he loves you. 
I bless you that you might feel his love as you righteously teach his doctrine. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.